Life of the Amazonia is a 1-4 to four player game for ages 14 and up, with an average gameplay length of 60 to 150 minutes based on the number of players published by Bad Comet. The basic overview for Life of the Amazonia has players building a jungle with terrain tiles and populating that jungle with different animals using a variety of tokens collected throughout the game. Once five of the eight animal cards are depleted, the game will end and each animal will score differently, and the player with the most points wins. To set up the game, you will start by arranging your play area. In the middle of the table, place the eight base animal cards face up for all to see. For your first game, it is recommended to use side A of each animal card. Depending upon the number of players, each animal will have a different total amount. Today, we'll be doing a three-player setup. For all other player counts, please refer to this chart in the rulebook to set up the game properly. In a three-player game, the woodpecker, leaf frog, and tamarind will require nine animeeples each, six toucans, five macaws and caimans, and four otters and jaguars. Near the card, place the five completed tokens and the end game bonus token. Within reach and visible to all players, you will want to place the two token vaults and the waterfall. Next, set up the terrain tiles. Start by giving each player a starting tile with this background. Any extras with this same background will be returned to the box. Then shuffle all the other tiles with the same background together to create a deck. And then draw and place three face up near this deck to be purchased. You will also want to shuffle the nature cards separately. You have an insect deck and a scenery deck. Once shuffled, place the decks so all players can see and reveal three cards from each deck to be purchased throughout the game. And leave room for a discard pile. Then create supply piles off to the side for the trees, aquatic flowers, seeds, and special terrain tiles. Finally, we'll move on to the player setup. Each player will need a bit of space to build their jungle. The players will place their starting tile in front of them. Each player will also take a matching bag, boat, and four colored markers, as well as a player aid. The markers will go on the waterfall track. One for the tiles, one for the trees, and one for the aquatic flowers. And finally, one on the storage track. Players will also receive two random unique animal cards. Choose one and return the other to the box. Notice here in the bottom right, a green dot means the card is easier to use and the red dot means it's more difficult. Collect the unique animeeple that matches your unique animal card and place it near the card. If the animal token has a seed symbol here in the corner, give that player a seed to start the game with. Finally, each player will fill their resource bags with these 10 specific resource tokens. Three one currency tokens, two two currency tokens, two one leaf tokens, two one water tokens, and one two fruit tokens. Now the player who most recently watched the nature documentary will be the starting player and then play will proceed clockwise. If playing with three or four players, the player who would go third and fourth will receive a seed before the start of the game. Now players will shuffle the tokens inside their bag, draw five tokens to be placed in front of them in their play area, and set the bag aside for now, and begin the game. The goal of the game is to acquire the most points. You do this by adding all forms of life to your jungle, from animals to plants, as well as collecting nature cards for an extra boost. On each turn, a player will have an action phase and a cleanup phase. During the action phase, players will have a list of eight actions they can perform, provided they have the resource tokens to do so. These actions include purchasing a resource token, placing a terrain tile, placing an animal, placing a tree, placing an aquatic flower, purchasing a nature card, expanding your storage, and or purchasing a bonus. Each player will perform these actions using the tokens in front of them for each. 
Once the tokens are used, they will be placed in their discard boat. During the cleanup phase, any unused tokens will be discarded to the boat or placed in reserves based upon your location on the storage track. Then you will draw five new tokens from your bag. If there are less than five tokens in your bag, draw the remaining tokens, then reset your bag by pouring the tokens from your discard boat into your bag, shuffle them in your bag, and finish drawing up to five tokens. There are a few rules you need to keep in mind when performing your actions. First, a player can use multiple resource tokens to complete an action. Second, a player can pay more resources than the action requires. However, the excess will never be refunded. It is just lost immediately. Third, when paying for an action, no matter the amount of resources used, you cannot split up the amount on a resource to pay for a different action. For example, you are allowed to use three water tokens to purchase two aquatic flowers, one aquatic flower costing one water token and the other aquatic flower costing two water tokens, but you cannot use a three leaf token to purchase a terrain tile costing one leaf token and a tree for two leaf tokens since these are two separate actions. When performing the same action multiple times with a single payment, the full cost must be paid all at once, and then the actions are executed in succession. And finally, fifth, when paying for the cost of an action, you can use any two resource tokens, no matter the value shown, as a single one value resource. And you may do this as many times as you'd like. For example, it costs three berry tokens and one water token to place a frog. You can use a two berry token, two currency tokens in place of a single berry token, and one water token to complete this action. With those rules, let's play a few turns and see how the actions play out during gameplay. The starting player will take their turn. The first action they will perform is to purchase a resource, which allows players to purchase a resource token from either token vault. They will have to pay the currency token amount listed below the token they wish to purchase. Then they will collect the token and place it in their discard boat for future use. This player will purchase a two berry token and must pay four currency tokens, place the currency tokens in the boat and the collected two berry token and place that in your boat as well. Next they wish to place a terrain tile. They will look at the waterfall track and see how much a terrain tile will cost. Since this is the first tile they will be purchasing, it will cost one leaf token. They pay the leaf token by discarding it to their boat, then move their marker up one on the terrain track. Making their next terrain tile they purchase cost two leaf tokens. They will collect one of the three face of terrain tiles and add it to their jungle. Then they will refill the empty terrain tile with a new one from the terrain deck. Please note when placing a tile, at least two hexes need to touch an existing tile in your jungle. You cannot place a tile like this. The last action they wish to perform is to place an aquatic flower. They will check the track and see the cost is one water token. Above, you can also see how many victory points you gain at the end of the game if your token remains here. The player will take the aquatic flower and place it in their jungle. The flower can only be placed in water as noted here on the track. All players can place one token in reserve for their next turn at the beginning of the game. If they wish to be able to hold more, they will have to upgrade their storage here by paying the water cost. However, when upgrading this, you must complete the bonus action listed. In this case, the bonus action is compost. This requires you to remove a token from play, from either your discard boat or from your play area in front of you. This lets you remove unwanted or lowered value tokens from play, so you are more likely to draw the tokens you wish later on in the game. Back to the player. They place their berry token to the side in reserve, and draw five new tokens from their bag and get ready for their next turn, then pass to the next player. The second player wishes to immediately place an animal. In order to do that, we have to look at the animal cards to see how that is done. 
Let's start with the woodpecker. Starting from the top left, you will have the placement requirements. This animal can only be placed on one of these two types of terrain, forest or marsh. If the animal has blue, it means it has to be placed on water. And gray means it can be placed on any terrain. Large animals, however, must be placed on two hexes. If both connected hexes are the same, they must be placed on both of that terrain type. If one is gray and the other is specific, it must be on that specific tile and any other tile. And finally, if they are both gray and have this equal symbol, it means they can be placed on any two hexes provided those hexes match. Moving down, you will see the cost to lure the animal to your jungle. The player will pay three berries and one leaf. Looking on the right side of the card, you have the class type, bird in this case, and the animal ability, in this case, how it scores at the end of the game. As you can see here, the woodpecker is worth four points but it only scores when adjacent to a tree. This player wishes to collect one and add it to their jungle. The player has one leaf token, but only has a two berry token, but will pay with two different currency tokens to act as a single berry token to complete the action. They will discard all tokens used to their boat, collect the woodpecker, and place it in their jungle according to its terrain requirements. The player then has a single water token left and they choose to buy an aquatic flower. They will move up the track and place the flower in their jungle. They have no more tokens so they move on to the cleanup phase by drawing five new tokens from their bag and then passing to the next player. The third player looks at their tokens and decides to plan for the future this turn. They will use their two water tokens to expand their storage. Here. On the right corner of the waterfall, you have the storage track. All players start with the ability to store or reserve a single token for the next round, allowing them to have a maximum of six tokens at the start of their turn. By paying water tokens, you can expand your storage up to three, letting a player start their turn with up to eight total tokens. By paying the two water tokens, they will move their marker up one to set two tokens into reserve, but they also must immediately activate the bonus listed on the track. This bonus requires the player to remove one of their tokens from the game. They can use any token in front of them or in their boat, but they cannot remove a token from their bag. The player decides to remove one of the water tokens they used for the upgrade from the game. The player will then place a tree with the single leaf token moving up one on the tree track on the waterfall. Then collect and place the tree. Trees can only be placed in the forest. When placing life, you must follow the requirements. But some of these locations have bonus abilities. For example, this player is placing their tree on this seed bonus icon. This allows the player to collect a seed. Seeds are used throughout the game to act as wild tokens with a value of one. A player can only have a maximum of four seeds at any given time, but are free to use the seeds at any time during the game. The player will use one of their seeds to purchase an aquatic flower and places it in their jungle. As a bonus action, the player wishes to play their unique animal in their jungle. The Hotsen only has the requirement when being placed that it is adjacent to a tree and an aquatic flower and must be on a forest and any other terrain since it occupies two spaces. After placing the Hotsen, the player now has the unique bonus of reducing the cost of a tree or an aquatic flower once per turn. Following that, they move on to their cleanup phase. They place their two leftover tokens in reserve since they expanded their storage earlier this turn then draw five new resources from the bag and end their turn. To show these last two actions, it would be easier to be further along in the game. So let's jump ahead a bit. Players have purchased higher valued tokens and have expanded and populated their jungles. With more water tokens, players have the opportunity to purchase nature cards. There are two types of nature cards, 
the insect cards, which are one-time use only type cards that are discarded after use. For example, this flannel moth will allow the player to collect a draw bonus twice. This draw bonus allows the player to draw a random token from their bag to place it in front of them in their play area to be used. With the extra currency tokens, the player wishes to fill in their location on their jungle, so they will purchase a bonus. The purchase a bonus action will let you do any or all of the bonuses listed here on the side of the waterfall once. The first bonus costs four currency tokens to relocate. This allows a player to move life, animal, tree, or aquatic flower to another unoccupied location that matches the terrain requirements for what they are moving. You cannot swap two things with this action nor can you gain any bonuses when relocating something. However, if you move away from a bonus location, the now vacated bonus can be collected again in the future. Also, it is important to note that unique animals cannot be relocated. The second bonus action is compost, costing five currency tokens. This allows the player to remove a token from the game immediately. The next bonus, which this player will perform is called a special terrain tile, costing seven currency tokens. This allows the player to collect and place a single special terrain tile. These can be placed on top of a regular unoccupied terrain hex to change the terrain type of that specific hex or in an empty space to expand your jungle. If placed to expand, it must be adjacent to at least two hexes. If replacing a terrain type, it must go on an unoccupied hex. If the single tile covers up a bonus, that bonus is not collected and no longer available for use. And the final bonus available for purchase is to gain a seed, costing three leaf tokens. Seeds, as we mentioned earlier, can be used in place of any resource token with a value of one. Multiple seeds can be used at any time and are discarded after use. A player can only have a maximum of four seeds at any one time. Seeds are not tokens, so they are not restricted by your reserve storage, but do carry on to future rounds. Here are a couple other bonuses you may run into. The Renew bonus, which lets you choose up to two cards or tiles or a mix of both, from the insect, scenery, and terrain pools and discard them and then refill them by drawing new ones from their decks. You also have this limited track bonus. The player to move to this space with this bonus first will be the only one to receive this bonus. In a four player game, the first two players receive this bonus. That means any player after them that lands on this will not receive the bonus. The next player will also purchase a nature card. However, this player wishes to purchase a scenery card. Scenery cards are collected and kept for end of game scoring. A player can only have four total scenery cards throughout the game. And if they obtain additional cards, they must discard one of their older cards to not go over the four card limit. Whenever any of the nature cards are purchased, replace them with a new card from their corresponding deck. Then the next thing this player will do is place an animal. They choose the toucan, which has the special ability when placed. It allows for any bonus space it is placed on to happen twice. So with it placed here, the player gains this bonus twice. This was the last toucan. Since this animal is no longer available, the green complete token is placed on the animal card. In this scenario, this is also the fifth complete token placed on a depleted animal card. This means the player also will receive the end of game bonus token. This action also marks the final round. The player will finish their turn and the other players will get one additional turn. Once all of their players have completed their final turn, the game ends and you will proceed to scoring. Points can be obtained through various methods. Following the scorecard, let's start with the base animals placed in the jungle. 
Each animal scores in a unique way, and that way changes depending upon the setup of each game. We will be going over the recommended side A of the animal cards that we set up at the beginning of this game. Let's start with the woodpecker. Both the woodpecker and leaf frog score based on grouping. This means each group, or in this case, pair of tree and woodpecker scores four points. Multiple woodpeckers cannot score off the same tree and vice versa. The leaf frogs score the same way, but with the aquatic flowers. Each group must contain one leaf frog and one adjacent aquatic flower, and you will gain four points for each. Tamarins score based on each animal in the same habitat. First find the tamarind, then determine its habitat, which is the same terrain that the tamarind is on without any breaks. Count the number of animals excluding tamarinds. Depending upon the number of animals you've counted, check the tamarind card to determine the number of points you will score. Each tamarind will score this way, and multiple tamarinds can score for the same habitat. Large animals that occupy multiple habitats still count as long as one of the hexes they occupy is in the same habitat as the tamarind. Toucans score four points each. Since they have a special ability when being placed during the game, they just have a base value when scored at the end of the game. Macaws score points like the tamarinds, except instead of animals in their habitat, they score based on the number of trees in their connected forest habitat that they are a part of. Multiple macaws can be scored for the same forest. And the trees used to score other animals, such as the woodpeckers, can be counted since you are scoring a different animal card. Once you have tallied the number of trees in the same habitat, check the table on the macaw card and score that many points. Cabins score the same way as the macaws, except they score based on aquatic flowers in the same connected habitat instead of trees. Count the number of aquatic flowers, check the table on the caiman animal card, and score that many points. Remember, multiple caimans can score for the same habitat. Next we have the giant otters that score based on the size of the habitat they occupy. Count the number of hexes in the habitat they occupy and score based on the table on their animal card. Again, multiple otters can score for the same habitat. Finally, we have the jaguars that score based on adjacent animals. They score three points for every animal immediately adjacent to them for a maximum of 15 points, excluding other jaguars. Next, we'll move on to the scenery cards. They all have their own ways of scoring, and for a full list, check the appendix of the rule book for full details of each card. Moving on, you will check the waterfall tracks to see if you scored any endgame points. The top terrain track will only score points on the last three spots. Otherwise, no points are awarded. The middle tree track has points listed above each location, and the player will score based on where their token is located at the end of the game. The same goes for the bottom aquatic flower track. Now you will check your play area for any leftover seeds. You will score one point for each leftover seed you have. And finally, the player who received the end game bonus token will score five points. Tally all your points together and the player with the most points wins. After a few games, if you feel confident in the rules, you can change out the base animals from side A to side B or any other setup card to change up the game. The gameplay will remain the same, but how you score each animal will change, allowing for new strategies to be enjoyed. I hope this how to play video helps get you started on your journey in Life of the Amazonia. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.